I have a question for you. What do you consider your landscape? This might be where you grew up, where you work or where you currently live. I want you to picture this landscape. What does it look like? Is it more urban or more rural? Think about the houses, the people, the surroundings, the sounds. Are you picturing it? Now think about the same landscape but then 10 years ago. What did it look like? Probably a lot has changed, right? Perhaps more people have moved into your landscape, resulting into more cars. Maybe certain areas have become greener or new roads have been constructed. In this video, you will learn more about these changing landscapes and we will refer to these changes as dynamics. By showing you some examples, you will understand how these dynamics can come from within your landscape and from outside. As you've experienced yourself, landscapes are no static entities, but they're subject to change. Developments and activities shape landscapes in positive and in negative way. And this often results in pressure on natural resources, on livelihoods and its unique culture. Now this image illustrates how landscapes are multifunctional and that all functions are interconnected. Let's take the example of climate change. This can have severe impacts on multiple specific functions in your landscape. So prolonged droughts may result in harvest failure. Declining fresh water resources affecting communities and animals and eventually food insecurity. Or what about the way we manage our natural resources? In one landscape, many different natural resources can be found and thus extracted. Think about timber, fish, palm oil, coffee, minerals and flowers. These resources make the landscape valuable, but the way they are managed and extracted is not always sustainable. So mismanagement often leads to degradation or deforestation, overfishing, erosion, water scarcity, which again can be worsened by climate change. While some changes are visible, others are invisible, especially for outsiders. An example is changing power relations. Many people inside and outside the landscape have a certain interest in the area access to land or access to resources or certain cultural linkages. However, not all players have the same level of decision-making power, which can trigger conflicts. All these examples of changes are called landscape dynamics. And you can observe changes starting from within the landscape. These are called internal dynamics and changes which are imposed or triggered from outside the landscape, external dynamics. But it's important to realize that these are often interrelated. For example, you observe people cutting down trees in your landscape and you always have to ask yourself why? Who is cutting these trees and why? This might be triggered by external dynamics such as changing forest policies. So the reason why people cut down trees could be related to a new zoning policy, which allows people to use timber and fuel wood for subsistence purposes. And this shows that landscapes are connected to external process at others' levels and skills. In this video, you learn that landscapes are not static and are always subject to change. Internal and external dynamics impact the landscape in positive and negative ways. But if you want to govern these landscapes sustainably, it is crucial to understand the linkages to these higher levels and skills and to look for the drivers of change. Therefore, it's essential that you have a thorough understanding of these landscape dynamics.